Hello everyone, today is a makes video. I'll model for you everything that I sewed in August, September, and October. I'm Sharon with Sharon Sews. Welcome to my channel where we talk all about sewing. Let's get started. McCall's 8201. This was my favorite August make. I wore that top at least once a week. Now the fabric is a gorgeous viscose crepe from Emma One Sock. The top is completely lined and I used a cotton batiste. The lining is bagged and what that means is there's no hand sewing or visible seams inside of the top. All of the elastic is also inside of the lining. Now bagging a lining can be a little bit confusing and on this top it can be easy to twist the sleeve pieces. So take your time if you sew this and just follow those directions. There is a lot of design ease and I did not need a full bust adjustment. I did, however, add one inch to the length and I think I'll add another two inches next time. Vogue 1701. First of all, I'm wearing this top backwards in the footage where I have on those white pants. <laughs> I didn't even notice it till I took the video. Well, just goes to show how oversized this top is. The fabric is a lightweight, semi-sheer cotton blend from Fabric Mart Fabrics. It was in a mystery bundle. I added a lining to the body because I didn't want to layer this top and it is semi, like I said, semi-sheer. I used a cotton broadcloth because that's what I had on hand. I also lined the collar as this fabric has a slight um, texture to it. It and it was irritating my neck. I did do a one inch full bust adjustment and I rotated that dart to the gathers at the neckline. Now this tunic would have fit fine without that, but I did want to keep the intended design ease. I found that I did not need to add the center back zipper or the buttonholes and buttons on the sleep cuff. I could get this top on and off easily without those. Now at first I thought this was too long, but the more I've worn it and looked at these video and photos, I like the length. I've worn it with jeans. I've also worn it with my full leather leggings as I'm showing right here. Now, in my opinion, if you sew this, you do need to have a lightweight drapey fabric to really showcase the design. The Sewing Workshop Urban Pants. This fabric is from Emma One Sock. It is a linen tensile cotton blend. I did buy it knowing that I was going to make these pants. There is only the seam in the center front. There's no side seam. And there's a front slit at the bottom at the hem that's finished with a facing and a button and a loop. That's the detail that I liked about these pants. The pants have a partial elastic waist. There's elastic in the back and the waistband in the front is flat. I did get some good suggestions on a previous Friday Sews video on adding pockets and I think I'll go ahead and add at least one patch pocket. Now, I hardly wore these. I think they're really cute and I was so excited to sew them, but I think I just haven't figured out the right top yet. By the way, the camo top is an itch to stitch Glenelli top and the black top is a Butterick pattern from 2000. Another sewing workshop pattern. This is the Zane top and it's the third time I've sewn it. I saw this jersey knit print in two colorways and decided to try the color block trend. I will say it looked better in my head than I think the actual shirt, and I don't wear this as much as I thought I would, but the fabric is so wonderful. It was from Minerva, and I did receive it in exchange for writing a blog post on their website. This pattern is only available as a PDF, which I tend to like the Sewing Workshop printed patterns better, but that's okay. I really liked this top. And it's actually designed for wovens. I think I'm going to cut off the asymmetrical portion of this top and just make it a simple color blocked tee. I really think I'll get more wear out of it that way. I love the fabric so much that I want to find a way to actually use this top. Lexington PJs. Now I have no footage of this one, only pictures. That's because I sewed this summer PJ set for my daughter. I have to admit, I kind of wanted to keep it after it was done because I think it is so cute. The fabric is a floral cotton panel print from Super Textiles on Etsy. I had to really think about the pattern placement as I only had three panels to work with. This pattern is excellent. This is going to be my go-to pattern for PJs. The drafting, the instructions, and how it turned out, I'm really, really pleased with it. The Style Sew Me Madison Cardigan. This is the second time I've sewn this one. I sewed a green version last year that I wore a lot. So when I got this black and silver check knit from Minerva, I decided to sew myself another one. The fabric was gifted to me in exchange for a blog post on their website. This fabric is lighter than a Ponte knit, but heavier than an ITY, and I think it just worked great with the waterfall front and curved back. I do love the movement on this Cardi, and I never fail to get compliments when I wear it. Vogue 1831. 
I'm just going to say it. I love this jacket. The fabric is a silk suiting with a gold metallic embroidered swirl design. I used a full leather remnant for the contrast collar and a bright striped rayon lining. And the jacket is fully lined, by the way. I wear it with jeans. I always plan on sewing it to wear with jeans, although at some point I might pair it with black pants. You know what the best part is? The bow on the back. You know, I have an entire review video on this jacket with all the details. I'll link it above and put it in the description box for you below. Vogue 1831, the trousers. Now, I wouldn't recommend the trousers from this pattern. Stretch denim was one of the recommended fabrics, and I used to stretch denim from Style Maker Fabrics, but I had some fitting issues, and I don't know if it was because of the stretch of the denim or the drafting of the pants. I tried them on before I added the waistband and discovered they were way too large. I took them apart and recut a smaller size. They're still too large and extra high-waisted, but I had already sewn in that fly front zipper, and I wasn't gonna remove that. I did remove about five inches from the width of the flare also and added an inch to the length. They're still shorter than I like. Not my favorite pair of trousers by any means. I think I'll stick to other patterns in the future. My favorite tee pattern, the Cashmere Concord Tee. This is the fifth one I've sewn. This fabric is a gorgeous cotton jersey from Style Maker Fabrics. I sewed a size 10 with a GH cup in the front and I went with a size 12 in the back. My shacket. I am loving the shacket trend, but you already know that if you watched my 10 shackets to sew now video. This is the Style Arc Logan shacket sewn out of a Style Maker rayon linen blend. Oh, this fabric, so divine, so fabulous. And I adore this pattern from Style Arc. I chose my size based on the pattern measurements, and it is just slightly oversized. And I especially appreciate the inseam pockets. I have been wearing this fairly often as it is the perfect layering piece for fall in East Texas. Um, by the way, you've heard me mention Style Maker Fabrics a few times now. Style Maker Fabrics did give me the fabrics for their fall style tour. I have a video devoted to the jacket and all the other pieces. I'll link that below if you want more details. Vogue 1798, so impractical and I don't care. I love this dress. I love the shape. I love the fabric. I love the sleeves. I am so happy that statement sleeve trend is continuing. This is a Rachel Comey design. It's the Lurie dress from the Resort 2020 runway show. Fabric recommendations did not include this lightweight metallic woven brocade, but I do like the final look. I sewed it with plans to wear it for Christmas. My church has a women's event every December and I might wear it to that. Now, I was afraid the boxy shape would be unflattering, but I think it works. This dress is fully lined, including those great big sleeves, and it is so comfortable to wear. There's multiple pleats at the shoulder and the bottom of the sleeves, and that helps to create that fullness. There's also elastic at the bottom of the sleeve. Now, my fabric choice made sewing difficult as the fabric frayed easily. I would like to sew it again, and I think I might sew it as a top to pair with jeans. The Style Arc Joan Top, another top that I've been wearing all the time. It's so simple. I mean, it's just a V-neck pullover woven top, but I really like it. The fabric is a lightweight woven from a Walmart pre-cut bundle. Now, I used it just to test the fit of the top, but I like the color and the look so much that it really has become a favorite. The bottom is finished with a wide facing, and that's a really nice feature as it helps the hem to hang nicely. The front is slightly shorter than the back, and the instructions for the V-neck are really good, and it results in that nicely shaped V. I have to admit, this neckline is really low, and I'm going to raise it next time because you know I'm going to be sewing more of these. And how awesome does the top look with the jacket that I sewed? McCall's 8241. Okay, you can see this runs really large. I sewed my normal size medium and I could easily go down to a small. I rather like the oversized trend that's happening right now, but I think this one is just too much. I can't decide if it's supposed to be a top or a poncho that I wear over another top. The fabric is a heathered purple sweater knit, fairly lightweight, that was from my deep stash. I cannot remember where I bought it. The pattern is just so simple to sew. Just a few hours is all the time you're going to need. It's like being wrapped in a blanket, and I do like the idea of that for those cold winter evenings, but it's too long on me, both in the body and the sleeves. 
I do have a sister that is about four inches taller than I am. And before I redo this one, I'm going to see if she wants it. Cardigan 111 from the September 2021 Berta Style Magazine. And it's a tall size. The tall sizes are designed for someone who is 5'9". For reference, I'm 5'5 five, five and a half, but I have short legs, so the length on this seems to be okay to me. I did remove about an inch from the sleeves. And I may go down a size when I sew this again. I haven't decided for sure. It's designed to be oversized, as many cardigans are right now, but it might be just a little bit too oversized for me. I can easily pull this one on and off without unbuttoning those front buttons. This fabric is another Walmart pre-cut bundle. Now I pick them up um, to have on hand to test the fit of patterns when I'm not real sure about a pattern because I can get a few yards of fabric at a pretty low cost. The cardigan I sewed out of a lightweight French cherry and it has random Bernard holes. Surprisingly, I really like the cardigan in this fabric. You just never know with those Walmart pre-cut bundles. That's all my makes for August, September, and October. If you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I would really appreciate that. Until I see you in the next video, I do hope you have a blessed day and happy sewing. What do we do here? Apparently, I don't know.